Hello, this is Chris Pickard, Director of Body Imbalance in Hertfordshire. And today I am going to bring you the topic of the Titanic, Chernobyl and your health. So let's just go a little bit backwards here. Some of you just for some reason may not know what Chernobyl may mean. I was alive when it happened. So Chernobyl, I'm referring to the nuclear incident at the Chernobyl power station in what is now the Ukraine, but was the USSR. And recently there has been a televised series about what actually happened at Chernobyl. So if I was just going to say Chernobyl and your health, you might be thinking of radiation. But I said the Titanic Chernobyl and your health. So what am I talking about? Well, just as we know that what happened at Chernobyl seems to have been uh, what, a combination of factors. Basically, Chernobyl is a power station and it melted down because cheap parts were made and there was some people that perhaps weren't trained to do what they were meant to be doing when they were doing something very tough. And so it was a combination of human error and cheap materials basically caused a meltdown of the plant and caused it to explode. What happened on the Titanic? Well, everyone knows the story of the Titanic hitting the iceberg, but it's puzzled many people for many years as to actually how it actually managed to sink because it was designed not to sink, it was designed to be strong. But there's a similarity between what happened with the Titanic and what happened at Chernobyl. Cheap materials were made. The actual ship was made of a, a steel that wasn't actually made of the best quality steel. It was made of a steel that could actually fracture easily. But perhaps even this was not enough to explain how the iceberg sank the Titanic. There was something else going on that until now had been completely discredited or disclaimed and overlooked. And that was the fact that there was actually a fire in one of the furnaces, not in the furnace, in one of the coal bunkers inside the Titanic and it lasted for days. And this fire, okay, it's been played down and denied, actually buckled and rippled one of what is called the bulkheads in the Titanic. And so it actually made it weak. And the bulkheads are there to actually stop water from getting one compartment to the next and thus preventing it from sinking. And what happened is this extreme heat, this fire had actually buckled and weakened the bulkhead. And so when the iceberg hit the weak steel, it ripped more than it would have. But then this bulkhead, this is the last one that gave out that actually made it sink two hours later. So if there hadn't have been a fire, people would have been saved. The Titanic might not have sunk, but certainly a ship would have got there and people and lives would have been saved. So what has shoddy workmanship, cheap materials and a fire got to do with your health? Well, a fire inside your body is inflammation. Inflammation you may be used to think of as thinking in terms of what well, inflammation causes pain. I take anti-inflammatories. I have less pain. But inflammation doesn't just cause pain in muscles and joints like arthritis, like muscle spasm, muscle, not muscle spasms, but muscle pain, muscle tears, um, sprains as well. Inflammation has got many, many causes and it such as stress, uh, lack of nutrients, too many of the wrong foods like too much sugar, too many processed fats, too many processed foods, toxins, some medications. In fact, we now know that things like anti-inflammatory drugs, when you take a small amount, yes, they have an anti-inflammatory effect, but when you start taking more, they actually cause more inflammation because they break down the cells. Other medications actually lead to inflammation as well. Then you have lack of sleep, then you have a lack of exercise, then you can have too much exercise certainly when combined with not enough nutrients. And so inflammation can cause widespread pain, but inflammation in your brain can lead to dementia, maybe Alzheimer's, inflammation in your organs, organ diseases, liver problems, kidney problems, inflammation in the immune system may cause cancer, inflammation around the heart, heart disease. So basically inflammation has got many causes and inflammation can break down many parts of your body and cause many diseases. So what's the answer? Well, it's not as simple a question of just putting on lots of chemical anti-inflammatories or even lots of natural anti-inflammatories because there are lots of natural anti-inflammatories. But the key is, the thing is, we actually needed that fire. The Titanic needed the fire in the right place, not in the coal bunker, 
fire needed to be in the furnace to produce energy. Chernobyl needed the heat to produce energy. Okay, it wasn't a fire, it was a nuclear reaction, but it needed a controlled form to actually produce energy. And we need energy too. So it's not a question of just dousing ourselves with water and putting all the fires out, otherwise we'd have no energy. It's about controlling and directing these things. And this is why it's so important to not just look at, okay, let's take lots and lots of this anti-inflammatory, let's take lots and lots of this anti-inflammatory herb. It's all about trying to control the mechanisms and put them in the right order by looking at all of the different influences of inflammation and making them work better in you so that you actually work properly and smoothly. So you don't melt down and you don't sink. If you'd like help with this, then by all means reach out. Maybe watch some of my other videos, watch the Superfood series, that can help you. Watch the things I've done on Ganoderma. Watch um, the Inflammation and Pain series. Watch the um, Fibromyalgia series as well. And by all means, reach out to bodyimbalanceuk.com or thepainreliefcenters.co.uk. It's me, Chris Picard. Be well.